All right, today, section 1.1. Understanding points, lines, and planes. Uh, these are the three fundamental principles of geometry. Now, again, realize we should begin our iPads here today and tomorrow. So don't feel like you have to write down every single thing that's on here. Okay, when you get your iPad, you will have access to everything I show you on the board on your iPad. Okay, so like this stuff right here, that would be on your iPad. All the vocab, everything is on your iPad. Feel free to write down what you want to, but don't feel like you have to write down everything today because it will come up on your iPad when you get there. Um, and we'll go through some iPad training later this week. Yes, sir. I was told this morning freshmen, sophomores get them today, or they're going to start with freshmen today. I don't know. I don't know. Bottom of the totem pole. I don't know. You don't read to right to left. It's because they knew. Actually, I only got a couple freshmen here. Yes, sir. All right, but understanding points, lines, and planes, the three fundamental parts of geometry. <clears throat> First thing we're going to talk about is points, lines, and planes. A point. A point has no size. Well, that's weird because every time we look at a point, this is what we see. So why do we give a point a dot if it technically has no size? Who can tell me? Who, well, why do we give it a dot? Well, why, why do we give a point a dot if technically it has no size? So that's where it starts? What's it, what's it identifying? It's identifying a what? A coordinate or a location. A lot of times we give it a dot there so we can find it a location. Okay, we give it a spot there. But technically, really, a point has no size. Okay. Um, all the figures below contain points. So the next one we're going to talk about is a line. A line has zero endpoints, and it extends forever in two directions. So it's going to go on and on and on and on and on in both directions. Okay, biggest thing on lines, they have what here? They have arrows on both sides. So lines have arrows on both sides denoting that's going to go on and on and on and continue on. To label lines, you put the letters with a line right above it. And notice the line has arrows. That is a line. A line segment now. A line segment has two endpoints and has a finite length. Who knows what a finite length means? What's finite? Ooh, we talked about this earlier in algebra two. Let's see who was listening. What does finite mean? Let's go the other way. What's infinite mean? Infinite never ends. What's finite mean then? It ends. A finite means it's going to end. It, it has a start and it has an ending that you can see. Okay, so it has two endpoints. What is the difference between a line segment and a line? What's the difference between those two? What does the line have that the line segment does not, Clark? Arrows. Yeah, line segment would not have arrows. So notice, there are no arrows out here beyond it. Okay? And to label a line segment, you put XY with a line segment above it. So there's no arrows above it. Labeling line segment. Array. Array has one endpoint, and it extends forever in one direction. So it goes just one direction. Okay, notice how many arrows would a ray have then? It would have one arrow. So it's going forever in one direction. To label a ray, you would list the letters with the arrows above it. Now, does it matter which way I label a ray? Could I label this ray like this? Callie, you're shaking your head no. Why not? Because what? It says, it says array, is name array is named starting with its endpoint. Nice job. So recognize I start with the endpoint and I go towards the arrow. Notice here, the arrow is above Q. So my arrow must be above Q. This one is above R. That one does not work. So rays are important. Yes, sir. That would technically be all right. Again, the key is that kind of the arrow has to match up there. Yep. And then a plane. A plane extends forever in all directions. It is a flat surface and extends forever in all directions. 
A lot of times to identify planes, we use like the top of our desk. That can be considered a plane. A lot of times we'll use examples like the front board, the walls, the ceiling, the floor. All these are planes. They're just flat surfaces that we use to kind of describe them. Okay, those are all examples of planes. It extends forever in all directions. Um, to identify a plane, you either list three coordinates in the plane, or a lot of times they'll be like an italicized, kind of old English here, capital letter. That's plane B. Okay? But again, it extends forever in all directions. A lot of times you think of a flat surface, your piece of paper, something like that. In your textbook, they'll use like a parallelogram here to identify it's a plane. Okay, those are the four base, or three basically, base points of geometry. Next one's here, we get a little bit tougher. Talk about collinear. When you think of the word collinear, there's kind of two words there. What do you think of? You think of co and you think of line, okay? Um, think about it this way. If you have a, I'll say most of your parents probably will all work here. If your parents ever talk about a co-worker, what does that mean? They work with them, right? They kind of the same occupation, right? So if it's a collinear, what's that mean? It's going to be the what? Same what? Same line. So collinear means points that lie on the same line. So for example here, G and F are collinear. They are points on the same line. Are F and H collinear? Are F and H collinear? Yes. Yes, those are on the same line. Would G and H be collinear? No. No, they are not on the same line. G and H would be what's called non-collinear. Points that do not lie on the same line. So F, G, and H are non-collinear points. Because they are points on two different lines. They are on more than one line. Non-collinear. All right, so collinear, non-collinear. What about coplanar? What do you suppose coplanar means? If collinear was same line, coplanar means same plane. So points or lines that lie in the same plane. For example, here, W, X, and Y are coplanar. There's W, X, Y. Those are coplanar, all in the same plane. And non-coplanar is not the same plane. So W, X, Y, and Z. You notice how Z is off the plane here? So that makes any of these non-coplanar points. So those are non-coplanar points. Okay. So let's identify some of these now. So first thing we're looking at here is number one. Name the following. X, Y. Is that a point, a line, a plane, a ray, a line segment? What do you got there, Chris? That's a line segment. To label a line segment, I list the letters with a line segment above it. Line segment X, Y. What about to Claire? What do you got for two? That is a line. So I go G, H with a line, right? There you go. Line G, H. Number three, what do you got, Jeremiah? Array. array. Now, how do I label this array, Jeremiah? Where should the arrow be above? Could I have it be A like this? I cannot have that. That'd be incorrect. And four. Ty, what's that? So what do I call that? Point what? Yeah, that's just point A. Point A. Basis of geometry. Those parts right there. Try these four. Same idea. Take a couple seconds. Try these four on your own. All right, Brock, number five. What do you got, bud? That's a line segment. What about number six, Becca? That's line T-Y. Number seven, Simeon. B.M. Ray. And eight, Audrey. Point P. Nice job. That is correct. All right, get a little tougher here. Identify these parts. So identify the following based on the plane. So number nine, I want you to list three 
collinear points, there are only one, there's only one answer to number nine. Okay, so list three collinear points. Ten, uh, three non-collinear points. Uh, there's multiple answers for number ten. Eleven line segment, multiple answers for eleven. Twelve line, multiple answers for line. And thirteen ray. Try to find a ray up there. Multiple answers for ray as well. So take a couple seconds to try these five. Number nine, three collinear points. Claire, give me three collinear points. What? Oh, no, no, no. It means three on one line. Three collinear points means three of them on one line. So, Brock, what is that one? C. E D. Yes, A and C would be collinear, Claire. Yes, B and D would be collinear, but it wants three of them on the same line same lines. Does that make sense, Claire? Yeah. Okay. So C, E, and D is the only answer there. Because okay, so it's the only line that has three points on it. Three non collinear points. Give me three points that are not on the same line. Joe McCoolidge. A, E, and what? Give me another one. A, E, and F. Awesome. Are A, E, and F on the same line? No. So those would be three non-collinear points. That'd be just fine. Give me a line segment. Clark, what do you have for a line segment, bud? What, which one? A and B is a great line segment. Blake, what do you have for a line segment? Yeah. You had A, B as well? Did anybody have C, D? Yeah. Did anybody have C, F? Did anybody have A, C? How about this? Could A, C be a line segment? If I went like that, would A, C be a line segment? I could break that line down to a line segment, you bet. If I denote it as a line segment and say, I'm just talking about that part that's highlighted right there, that is a line segment. So I can break a line down to a line segment if I wanted to. How about a line now? What do you have for a line? Tyler Wilson. AC. AC is a line. What's another line, Anderson? Uh, BD. BD is a line. Could CF be a line? Could that right there be a line? Why not, Ty? Because it, it stops. There are no arrows there, right? Correct. All right, last but not least, a ray. Spence, where's the ray? You got BD? Did you put like this, BD, like that? Guess what? That's wrong. That's right. <laughs> that would work. Why? Because we made it a ray. I'm saying I'm going from B to D, and I'm talking about just the part of the line that goes that way. Could I go the other way here? Could I have said... DB. Yeah. Now I'm talking about this ray going that way right there. What's another ray I could have said? I could have said AC. I'm talking about that one going that way. All of those are rays as long as I denote them correctly there. What is not a ray up here? Uh, CF would not be a ray. AB would not be a ray. CD would not be a ray. Okay, correct. All right, try these four. Same idea. Now we're talking about in 3D. We're talking about like a barn over here. Give me three coplanar points, three non coplanar points, a line that intersects BC, and three non collinear points. Take a couple seconds, try these four on your own. All right, Colin, do you have three coplanar points? What do you got? E, F, C. Would everybody agree with those three coplanar points? Yep. They all make kind of that roof of that barn. That'd be correct. What's another example of coplanar points, Anderson? B, C, D. E, what? B, C, D. B, C, D. There's another example of coplanar points. Correct. What about if I were to give you G, H, and D? 
Would G, H, and D be coplanar? Christopher. Yes, because it would be the bottom. Yes, it would. Be the, oh. It'd be the bottom. That'd be like saying I take that back corner of the room, that back corner of the room, and the front corner. What do they all have in common? The floor. Those would be coplanar points. So you kind of got to think about that in three dimensions, how that looks sometimes. Okay. Um, Fifteen. Non-coplanar points. Mr. Heston, what do you got for three non-coplanar points? What would you say? B, H, G. B, H, G would actually be coplanar. See how they make the side of the building over here? So how about not B, H, D, but, sir? A, F, and D. Those are great ones. A, F, and D. Do they have anything in common over there? Those would be three non-coplanar points. Those are great ones. Um, 16. A line that intersects BC. Callie, what's a line that intersects BC? A, B does. What's another line that intersects it, Caden? DF? DF's not a line. DF's not a line. How about DC? Would DC intersect BC? Yes. Mr. Bannister? FC would intersect it as well. And last but not least, number 17, three non-collinear points. Oh, let's go with... Becca, give me three non-collinear points. D, G, and E. Is that what you said? Yeah. Great. Those are three non-collinear points. Good work. And that's it for today. Here's your assignment. H -W.